Hey YouTube, today we're going to learn the ins and outs of running a sluice box. Um, first thing you want to always do is classify. I drag classified this so I can show you why we want to wet classify. So we'll go ahead and wet classify the big stuff and I'll show you why we want to do that. Okay, now when you classify it, you're going to have a bucket full of water. So you want to let it sit to let everything float to the bottom. And then I like to dump that water into the sluice box. That way if there's gold in it and it comes out of the bucket, it'll be trapped in the sluice. Alright, as you can see, by wet classifying it, we got a little more finer material. If we would have just thrown that off to the side, we would have missed that. And if there would have been gold hiding on those rocks, we wouldn't have caught that. We would have just thrown it out. Some of you may be wondering why we classify before we run through a sluice box. I'm going to go ahead and show you why. We'll take the bigger stuff that we classified in the earlier video and run it through the sluice box and we'll see how it acts. As you can tell, nothing is moving down the sluice because these rocks are heavier and they can't be washed through. As you notice, all the rocks are still sitting up there at the top. There is some that has moved down but there is nothing down here. This is why we classify. Okay, after you get your sluice box going, you want to make sure your water is running evenly. If you don't know how to set up a sluice box, check out my other video. Okay, when you're feeding your dirt, you want to feed it in slowly and underneath the water. Okay, if your sluice is running too slow, it'll plug up. You don't want your sluice to plug up because then you can't move your material and if the gold's on top and it's plugged up, it'll wash right out. Another way to see if you don't have enough water pressure is there's hardly any water coming over the edge of your sluice. Another good way to see if you have proper water flow is put a gold pan at the bottom and see if, it if any of the dirt is going over the edge. Even with slow water pressure, you can see that there's sand coming over. 
You can also pan this out to see if you've got any gold. If there's gold in your pan, you know your water flow is too fast. Now that I hooked the pump up, you can see that I have better water flow and it's moving the material out at a faster rate. So let's go ahead and catch the end of that into the pan and see if we're how much material is actually coming over the end. As you can see, we have a fair amount of light material being washed away. You can see now that I have a lot of material built up on the end of the sluice box. I'm going to go ahead and let the water do its work and wash that up before I feed any more in. When you're first learning to use your sluice box, and you're using a pump, you need to mess with the water until you find what's right for your sluice box. Then you can set the idle screw to your pump and then you can always get the same water flow every time. With a sluice box this big, I could probably run five or six five gallon buckets through and safely catch all the gold. Some people will argue and say that with it being this big, you could run 10 or 20, but I don't like to run too much because I don't want to miss any of that gold. If I'm going to work this hard, why would I want to lose it? This dirt here I got from a friend of mine. He said there might be gold. He doesn't know, so I'm checking it out for him. Now I've ran about a half a five-gallon bucket through it. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, see if there's any gold in it. 